Okay, here we are with lesson 15, equations of graphs of proportional relationships involving fractions. Again, this is just more applications of what we already know. So you're mostly going to be working in your worksheet. Uh, you might want to have your journal available just in case you, there are some, uh, there's some information that you want to include in your notes. All right, so remember the meaning of the unit rate the meaning of the ordered pair in a proportional relationship context, the meaning of zero comma zero, the ordered pair, and the meaning of the ordered pair one comma r, which represents the rate from lesson 10. The goal here is to help us see the relationship between the unit rate and the changes in x and y. So let's take a look at example one. We're going to use a table to determine the constant of proportionality and look at what this does in the context of the problem. We're going to work on how to graph the fractional coordinates so that the ordered pairs are as accurate as possible. So remember that a 10K race is a 10 kilometer race, which is about 6 and 2 tenths of a mile. So can you find Sam's mother's average rate for the entire race based on her previous race time? Well, this is how we do it. If we want her rate, we know that it's going to be kilometers over hours. We're given that she can do five kilometers in one and a half hours. So since that sets up a complex fraction, in which case we have to clear the denominator, we end up multiplying by the reciprocal two thirds, which gives us five over one times two thirds over one. And when we do five times two thirds, we end up with 10 thirds kilometer over one hour. Again, it's really important to keep the, uh, the uh, labels attached so that you know what your, your rate is, in this case, 10 thirds kilometers in one hour. And another way we can say that is three and a third kilometers per hour. So that's how fast she runs. So complete the table on the graph. Remember that when graphing the fractions, estimate where the points are going to go and label each point with the ordered pair to explain what each point represents. So go ahead and pause the video, do your calculations on the table and graph them, and then continue the video to check your answers. Okay, so this is what you should have. For a half an hour, she would run one and two thirds kilometers. For one hour, she would run three and a third kilometers. For one and a half hours, five kilometers. Two hours would be six and two thirds. Two and a half hours would be eight and one third kilometers. And three hours would be 10 kilometers. So again, when you're graphing them, if we were good, to graph each one, one half would be approximately one here, uh, or a point here, and that point corresponds with one and two thirds on the y axis. One would be three and a third, uh, one and one half would be five, two would be six and two thirds, two and a half would be eight and one third, and three would equal 10. And that is the only point that falls on an actual grid line. All right, so now go ahead and complete uh, parts A through C. When you're done answering those questions, continue the video to check your answers. All right, so for parts A through C, what are some specific things you notice about the graph? Well, again, it forms a straight line, and it relates the hours to the kilometers run, and it goes through the origin. And what is the connection between the table and graph? Well, time is in hours and on the horizontal axis, and kilometers run is the vertical axis, and the coordinates on the points of the line are the same as the pairs of numbers in the table. And again, you could also talk about which is the dependent variable and which is the independent variable. And what does the uh, ordered pair two and six and two thirds represent? Well, after two hours, she has run six and two thirds kilometers, so again, two hours being the independent variable and six and two thirds kilometers being the dependent variable. So write an equation that models the data in the chart. 
Well, you could write it either y equals 10 thirds h, or if we designate d for distance and h for hours, it would be d is equal to 10 thirds h. All right, so for example two, you use the graph or the table. To finish the table, find the constant of proportionality and write an equation that represents the table and the graph. Uh, make sure you label at least five ordered pairs on the graph and then answer questions one through seven about the table and the graph. So this is gonna take a little bit of time, so go ahead and pause the video, do example two and answering the seven questions and then continue. All right, so you have finished example two. Let's go ahead and check your answers. So here is the table, finishing the table with eight. One is to eight and two pounds is to $16. And again, here are at least five labels that you would label on your graph. And here is part of the answers to the questions. Make sure you pause the video and check your answers. Again, making sure that you identify the unit rate and also an equation to model this data. All right, continuing on for five through seven, what does the ordered pair mean? Um, if you could spend $10 on mushrooms, again, using the equation, make sure you show your work and write a concluding statement and then asking what is 30 pounds of mushrooms. Again, using the equation again, showing your work is what will be expected. So how would you find the cost for three pounds, four ounces of mushrooms? Again, don't forget to convert three pounds, four ounces into pounds, knowing that 16 ounces is a pound. When you do that, you're gonna convert three, and fourth three pounds, four ounces to three and a fourth pounds, multiply it by eight, and you're gonna get $26. Equations are very useful as models to help determine very large or very small values that are difficult or impossible to see on a graph. So that's why equations are important because there are infinite amounts of uh, independent variables you can put in or independent values that will create independent or um, infinite amounts of dependent uh, values. All right. So to summarize, proportional relationships can be represented through the use of graphs, tables, equations, diagrams, and verbal descriptions. In a proportional relationship arising from ratios and rates involving fractions, the graph gives a visual display of all the values of a proportional relationship, especially the quantities that fall between integer values. So that's why it's important to be able to identify fractional type of values or points. All right, we'll see you in class.